You may have heard iterators talked about and maybe you have seen them at times, but have you created one? An iterator is a unique JavaScript construct and we're going to take a look at it in this tutorial. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. An iterator is a structured way to pull information from a source in a one at a time fashion. Many times an iterator is not used because many developers don't know they're possible. This feature was added with ES6 and I'm going to provide a simple example so that you can see how they are created and how they can be used. So first the example. Let's say that you have an array and you want to access each value in that array, but you don't want to iterate through those values all at once like a loop would do. Let's say you want to be able to access a value when you need it, perhaps each time a user interacts with the UI or something like that. And then the next time the user interacts, you pull the next value. Now, there are other ways to solve this problem, but this can also be achieved with an iterator, and it is a pretty slick solution. So let's assume this is the array we want to work with, and we're going to set it up with an iterator so that every time we use the next method of the iterator, it will provide the next value. And we can also check to see if we have gone through all those values. So the first thing we need to do is set up an iterator for this array. And this is how that's done. I'm going to declare a variable. This will contain the iterator. And I'm going to set that equal to the array. And then in square brackets, we use a symbol, a symbol to define the iterator. Symbol is a new primitive as of ES6. And this is how we enter it. And then we invoke that to set up the iterator. So this is the structure of how you would set it up. Now, once you have the iterator set up, then you can use a command like this. We'll put the results of it.next. So we use the next method to access the first value. Now we need to take a look at the results so you can see how that value comes across. It actually comes across in an object because it has two key value pairs. One is the value, the other indicates whether we're at the end of the array or not. But this is how you would access it, it.next. Then when you want the next value, you would do it.next again. So let's save this at this point and then I'll continue in the console. We're going to take a look at what we have in the console in result and how we would continue to access it. But take note, this is how we set up the iterator. Once it is set up, then we use the next method to access each value in a one at a time fashion. All right, let's save that. I'm going to refresh and open up the console here. Now let's first take a look at the result. And as I mentioned, this comes across in an object. So we see two key value pairs there. We have a value and it's equal to 100, which is the first item from the array. And then we have a done and it's equal to false, indicating that we're not done with this yet. There are still values that are there. So if we want to extract the value, we would do something like this. And there's our value. If we want to check to see if it is finished yet, we would do something like that. And we can see that false is returned. It is not finished. So we can do it.next again. Something like this. We'll put the results in that result variable again. So now if we check results, here's our object with the value and the done property. And once again, we want to extract that 
it's just an object so we can do it that way we can also check the done property to see if it is done or not if it's equal to true then we know that we're at the end of the array and that may cause us to do something else maybe we need to go through the array again or we want to go through the array again so we would set up a new iterator or maybe we simply indicate that whatever we were doing there is complete and finished but this is how you would set up an iterator right here and then this is how you would interact with it in a one at a time fashion each time using the next method to extract a value now I showed an array and we created an iterator for an array but we can create iterators from other iterable types in JavaScript for example a string is an iterable and we could set up an iterator for that and it would extract each character for us we could do that with a map or a set those collections are also iterables that we can create an iterator from so those are some other types of data structures that we could do this with now before we're done here please hit the like button and subscribe and remember I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section if you would like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. For a certain level of support, you can get access to the code files I use. You can also contribute by visiting my website. You can follow a link for both in the description. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.